All right, guys. This video took me about six hours to edit. Uh, it certainly isn't anything special, but it's certainly very long, and I do apologize for that. Um, you know me. Um, it's a 10,000 mile review of the Ford Fusion Energy. Um, you'll understand why it was so long when you see it. For those of you who don't want to see me driving around bantering about, talking about what I like and don't like about the car, uh, I'm going to put up on the screen right now uh, time stamp for when you can get right down to where I give my final reviews, the hits and misses of the car. Uh, also, uh, on this tape, I'm also going to put on the screen again. Uh, I'm going to put on uh, the um, where the outtakes start because uh, I had like about three or four minutes of outtakes. <laughs> I screwed up all the time because I'm an idiot. but Or doofus or moron or whatever the heck you want to come up with. So, I wanted to give you those two timestamps, guys, so you didn't have to waste your time. If you, if you don't like watching me banter, some, some of you guys like watching me talk. I don't know why. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty scary looking, but, you know, by all means, enjoy. Uh, uh, but I thought I'd give you at least the ability to jump forward if it gets boring or, or so forth. I do apologize again for the length. <laughs> I know nobody watches videos this long. I mean, I, I, I got to be one real charming son of a bitch to get anyone to watch a video this long. But it's there for anybody who wants to uh, spend the next uh, three months uh, watching over this video. Uh, I'm sure nobody who, who likes the insights are going to watch this video unless they want to just laugh at me. Well, here goes the video, and uh, I hope uh, at least a few of you enjoy it. Well, hello, everybody. This is a long overdue 10,000-mile review uh, my 2019 Ford Fusion Energy. This can pretty much go for the 2020 Ford Fusion Energy too because I haven't seen any differences between the two. And I don't think they're gonna do any difference between the two to be perfectly honest. Uh, let me set my cruise control here so I don't get caught for speeding. And there we go. I'll start with the outside. Again, I, I'm just gonna go all around. I'm gonna tell you my impressions and then at the end I'll probably give you hits and misses and so forth and we'll go from there. All right, we're gonna start with the outside. Um, as said in my original review, I like the looks of the outside of this car. Um, the front end, beautiful front end, uh, reminiscent of the Aston Martin. Uh, in 2019, they changed the grille of this car, giving it a crisscross uh, design, which I think is absolutely nice. Uh, in fact, I think it's beautiful. I always thought the car always looked very nice. Uh, although they did change the head, uh, the, um, the uh, fog lamps too to this weird design, uh, which is actually kind of wonky looking, so it kind of messes up the looks up there. But otherwise, beautiful face on this car. Side of the car also looks very nice, uh, very good design. Uh, the only negative, in my opinion, is the rear end. The car looks kind of silly in the back, uh, kind of generic uh, looking, nothing special. Uh, so, you know, except for the, um, the addition of a built-in spoiler into the uh, trunk, which I think is very nice. Uh, even for people who don't like spoilers, it's a very understated, nice looking spoiler. Uh, looks very good on the car. Um, also, uh, the wheels look very nice for this car. Uh, they use the Energy Saver tires uh, on this car, which are perfectly fine. The only negative of the Energy Saving tires in this car with this suspension is that they are impossible in the snow horrible in the snow. This car is actually very scary in snow. Now, I don't have any uh, uh, snow tires. I do recommend them if you're going to drive in a lot of snow. You have to get snow tires for this car. Um, but I just make sure I wait until the roads are clear and I drive like a grandma. You have to drive like a grandma in this car if you're going to keep the energy saver tires and you're going to drive in the snow. End of rant on that. First thing I noticed when I first started getting into this car is I would hit my head <laughs> on this sill here. Uh, it has a very low feeling roof to it, although there's plenty of room for tall people in here uh, and plenty of room for le plenty of leg room. That's something that's really heavy duty in this car. Uh, you do have to duck to get in. One of the nice things is when you shut off the car, the, uh, the electric uh, uh, chair pulls all the way back, the seat pulls all the way back, and then it goes back into the correct position once you uh, start the car when you're sitting in it to the last position. You also have seat memory, which is also nice, something I like. Uh, the seats are reasonably comfortable. I'm a fat guy, so I mean, things are gonna be less comfortable you know, for me than most because, well, I'm, I'm a fat person. 
I'm also a doofus, so that makes things even worse. Um, car comes uh, with blind spot monitoring, which is very important in this car because while there's plenty of glass to look out of, the pillars are very thick in this car, leading to a lot of blind spots. So without blind spot monitoring, you actually have a lot of blind spots in this car, leading to a lot of the bobbing and weaving and looking in order to find out where you're going. Uh, blind spot monitoring. The, also, the side view mirrors also, something very nice that I like about this car, is that they're also tinted uh, so people's brights don't shine in your face, so they're not very bright. Uh, Self-heated. Uh, they also have, um, I believe they're also part of the cross-traffic alert system is built into them as well. Uh, and they have a puddle light built in and, of course, turn signals. Uh, but blind spot monitoring works very well in this car and is definitely essential for the use of this car. Uh, otherwise, you're going to find it kind of hard looking around. One of the things you're going to be very uh, noticeable about this car when you get into it is it's very quiet. It's a quiet driving car. Uh, it's quiet on the road. Its engine can get loud at times, but not unusually so. And it's it's very quiet. It also has a very smooth ride, uh, very quality ride uh, on this car. Holds the road pretty well. Uh, not very sporty, but it can take the turns reasonably well. But keep in mind, you do have the energy saver tire, so you know you are going to get some squealing over a period of time. Uh, another negative of the uh, suspension is the suspension feels kind of. I guess spongy would be the word for it. I mean, it's very comfortable and all that, but when you're on the highway, and let's say you're driving uh, over like bumps in the highway, the car will unsettle just slightly. Uh, it does hop a little. Uh, again, that's uh, very much just part and parcel of having a softer suspension uh, in this car. So ride comfort is extremely nice in this car. Steering is accurate and reasonable, and uh, it drives very nice. It sits very well. You, you sit relatively high, uh, and so forth. Now, uh, your gauge clusters, pretty typical, pretty simple. I do like the fact that I have two different screens here. Uh, the nice thing about two different screens, and oh my God, I got a freaking construction vehicle ahead of us, so I guess I'm going to be late for work. Uh, the nice thing about having the two screens is while you can have your general information um, on your radar, uh, how many miles per gallon, your battery, your fuel, and so forth on your left, your right will give you all your GPS information, which is something I like to have at all times. It tells me what's going on with the GPS, uh, tells me where I am, what road I am, and the speed limit based on the GPS built into the car. One bad thing, though, is if you do use, um, if you do decide to turn on your um, Android Auto. I can't speak for Apple, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same with the Apple as well. That screen doesn't show any GPS information at all. The funny thing is, is when you use Android Auto, and this is a big, big negative, um, is uh, that you can't you you can't switch back and forth between Android Auto and the GPS built into this car. Uh, this is a terrible uh, design flaw. Uh, basically. You have to literally turn off Android Auto in the settings in your Sync 3 system, and then you're able to use the GPS. That is terribly bad, uh, and it's a major issue on this car. Now, I, I can understand why it wouldn't have GPS information here because, I mean, it's Google Maps or Waze. They have to make a deal with them so they can I interface with this. Uh, looks like they're painting the lines on the road, so I'm stuck on this road forever. But this is something you should know on this car. Uh, uh, about about the GPS. The GPS is a, itself is actually good. Um, uh, the GPS is actually excellent in this car. I never use uh, Google Maps or anything because there's really no reason to because the darn car uh, does just fine. Oh boy, people are just passing, way passing, way from behind, which you shouldn't do. Uh, so GPS is excellent, but it doesn't offer any updates for free. You have to pay, uh, pay for your updates, which is ridiculous. Uh, $35,000 car, they can throw in a couple of updates, so they need to get over themselves with the whole update situation. Uh, gas mileage is excellent. It does get pretty much about, in hybrid mode, about 42 miles to the gallon overall. Uh, not the best, uh, but for the size of the car, not unreasonable. Uh, you can go up to about 25 miles in electric range. Uh, I generally, what I do is I save my electric for a certain period of time to use. Uh, the way my drive is set, I can go hybrid 
and I, I you, you have a setting down here that you can set uh, so you can save uh, your electric and only save up to 95% and won't save 100%. Uh, don't ask me why. I guess it uses it at the very beginning to do stuff. I don't know. I don't care. But what I do is I have a nice, easy ride here, which is easy to do. Hang on a second. We're going to pass this these painters here. Here you're going to hear the engine. That's the engine doing some power. Not too bad. And it does have a reasonable amount of uh, spiffiness to it. So, pretty good. I uh, drive here, and then as soon as I get on my highway, on my way to work, I put it onto electric. I literally can go the whole 20 or 25 miles during summertime in electric. Give me an overall uh, average gas mileage on this car between 60 and 65 miles to the gallon per tank. So that's an excellent gas mileage. You can have it set to automatic, but it's not as good. But you're only gonna get about 42, 43, 44 in hybrid mode, so keep that in mind uh, with the car. Uh, I wanna talk about the uh, you know, yeah, basic general set settings, but I do like the smoothness of this car and so forth uh, and how, how it rides. We do have automatic uh, wipers on the car. They're actually very good on this car. Uh, they respond very well to the rain. However, if you do start the car and there's moisture all over your, your windscreen, for the first minute, the thing's going to be swinging almost at full speed, trying to get all that moisture off. Even when it's long gone, it still swings for a little, but then it chills out. Keep that in mind. Funny thing, though, is if you turn off this car in mid-swipe, the, winds, the, the windshield wipers stop. They don't park themselves, which is very funny considering my $25,000 Honda will park the windshield wipers, although its auto wipers suck. <laughs> so what can you say to that, right? And again, my nose as usual. But then again, my nose is always like that. I am a Jewish boy, so I got a big nose to deal with. So there you go. All done. Uh, also, uh, well, let's not even jump into that. We'll just keep, continue going. It has automatic lights. They're very uh, reliable. Uh, they they go to brights in darker areas and they go back to normal, uh, turning your uh, turning your fog lamps off and on, uh, in between. Uh, very reliable and I've never had any problems. I don't get many flashes from other people with the lights in this car. Uh, the beam pattern is good and it does light up the road pretty well. My Honda is better, but it is actually pretty good. Now I want to get into the safety systems of this car. Something that's very important to me on this car. But before we do that, we're going to get into the cruise control. You got two kinds of cruise control. You got regular and eco cruise control. Uh, eco, uh, it's a little easier on the gas and so forth on this car. And, uh, you know, for better gas mileage and so forth. One thing I really love about the cruise control on this car. This car is very big on using its regenerative braking to keep adding energy into the batteries. You know, give you the best gas mileage and keep as much power into your batteries. By doing that... Uh, it does this also automatically when you're in cruise control. So if you start going down the hill and you start speeding up, you've got it set to 45, starts getting to 46, 47, 48, it'll engage. It's, uh, uh, it's, a, uh, it's regenerative braking and bring you down to the proper speed. This car actually maintains its proper cruise control speed at most times. And it's very good about that. And it's the first car I've ever had that was actually like that. Um, and I actually like that. I like the automatic aspect of the regenerative braking in that aspects. So that's the cruise control. Reliable, good. And we'll get into the adaptive aspect of it right now. Safety system, the adaptive cruise control. Excellent on the Ford. Excellent. Very reliable. You can choose distance. Uh, you have an up and down button for your choosing your distance. No problem. Uh, one other thing, it's very good at recognizing all obstacles in the road and responding appropriately. Uh, my Honda has an issue where it doesn't see cars when you're going about 30 miles per hour and there's a car stop to stop light. And I'll, 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 more than 50% of the time, probably closer to 70% of the time, it will not see those cars. You have to slam on the brakes. It won't even engage a brake alarm. This car almost always sees cars uh, and it's very good about the way it brakes uh, it also has a big light up top here uh, on the dash that will flash um, and let you know hey hey you know your emergency brake event that way you're totally aware that there's a, an emergency situation engaging but this car this is one of the few cars that is much more forgiving when it comes to say your uh, say if you don't pay much attention when you're driving uh, you know, you're doing your adaptive cruise control, and you're driving around the city using the adaptive cruise control. This car is more reliable and safer. So if you do tend to 
not pay attention or something, this car, I have I have high hopes that this car will save you from a situation like that if you, you know, and so forth. You're not gonna get into an easy accident with this car. So the adaptive cruise control, the radar control, the uh, you know radar sighting on this car is excellent. Very, very, very good, top notch. The lane departure system, eh, not so good. Lane departure system, it recognizes lanes very well, better than my Honda. However, there are three settings. You can have either it can warn you uh, by shaking your steering wheel, uh, it can aid you, or it can warn and aid. Aid means it'll pull you back into the, you know, into the road and so forth. And all of it does work, sort of. Now, if you have it set only to warn, if you start crossing that line, boom, it'll shake the steering wheel, and you can change how much it shakes. Perfectly fine. The problem I have with is aid. It does aid and it does pull you back into your lane, but it's very, very light pulling to the point of where it's so light that just my general holding on the steering wheel, I don't notice it as much. And here's the real kicker. Let's say you're driving and you start moving across the line slightly. The car will try to pull you back in the center, but since it pulls so lightly, you may not notice it and you may still cross the line. Rather than start shaking the steering wheel at that point, once you're crossing the line and letting you know, hey, dude, we're trying to push you back into your lane. No, it gives up and the lines go gray and the car will literally let you just drive right across the road. It's, it's, it's not very reliable. What it really should do is as you get really close to the line, it should turn yellow, which it does, and then it should start pulling you across. Once you hit the line, across the line, it should start shaking your steering wheel. It doesn't do that, it has no logic, it's not reliable in that aspect. Um, I have it set to aid and um, and warn, and I, I, I watch the lines anyway, and I'm careful and so forth, but it's not so good. And it doesn't act the way it really should. Um, and, and it's funny, when I have it set like that all the time and I'm driving and I go through some curves, sometimes the steering wheel will get a little stiff because the car thinks I'm you know, getting out of my lane and I have to add a little more force to turn. So it does have the ability to, to, to move you back in your lane, but it doesn't do it well. So in that aspect, that safety system is not so good. Uh, but the adaptive cruise and the stop and go traffic is fantastic in this car. It, 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 it's, fan, it's just fantastic. We have rear parking sensors, but no front parking sensors. That's a major, major uh, uh, sadness for me, the front parking sensors. They're just not, they, they need front parking sensors on this car. Uh, I really wish I had it for my garage, but the rear parking sensors work well. They also lower the volume of the radio when they beep, uh, something that the Honda does not do, which I think is pretty important. Um, you know, you listen to your volume real loud, and you got an alert going on, you don't know, you can't hear it. This car will lower the volume of your radio when you have a brake alert, plus you got that big bright light that flashes in front of you. Uh, and when you're getting you know, close uh, when parking and so forth. Rear camera also works pretty well, uh, and that's very good. Uh, the general dash over here where all the buttons are for the climate control, I don't like the design. Um, they would have done better with knobs and pushing knobs as opposed to the buttons. It is nice that you have all your um, uh, all your climate control right here uh, on the front because doing climate control on the screen is just a pain in the butt. Uh, you also have your, your seat and um, your seat controls for heated and cooled seats. Heated seats work great. Cooled seats, they do, they also help. Uh, they're nice. Uh, they get a little, you gotta get a little used to it. Uh, the uh, air condition works excellent in the car. Keeps its temperature very well. The defrost is also excellent in this car. Um, uh, it defrosts itself just like that, no problem. Uh, so I gotta say the, the, the heating and the cooling is very good in this car. Now let's get to the stereo. You actually get a CD player with this car, which is very cool. Uh, I'm gonna sit here and take a drink from my Fresca. Hang on a second here. Ah. Back to the stereo. You get a CD player, which is nice. Never used it, but that's fine. You have two USB ports down there so you can charge your phone and a spot to put your phone. You put your, uh, you can put thumb drives in there to play your music on the, on the system. How does it sound? It's a Sony system. It's about 380 watts, I believe. And they've been using this system for a long time in this car, in these set of cars, and it works pretty well. It's very good. It plays just about everything fine. 
the vast majority of people will find their premium system to be pretty premium. Uh, it's a bit on the muddy side. Uh, I have my treble and mid-range put at maximum in, in order to get some of the highs back because it's a very muddy system. It is a bit bassy. Uh, rock and roll is a lot of fun in this car for what it is. Uh, I recommend for all those who are buying this car and don't like the way it keeps changing its volume a lot <clears throat> off and on, there are three microphones in here. Go under the headliner and just unplug them. That way it doesn't do... Uh, volume control while you're driving, you know, where it gets louder because you're driving uh, and it's getting noisier in the cabin. It just, it's better when it's always loud so you can control your volume the way you want to rather than have the car do it. Uh, it also control the volume if it starts getting, uh, if you have your music playing so loud and you start getting hard hits of bass or whatever, you'll hear it kind of lower down the sound. That's the system protecting itself from blowing the speakers. Uh, the speakers are okay. They're Sony speakers. Uh, they're kind of bassy and so forth. Uh, I added a uh, hideaway sub in there to add a little bit more uh, thump, uh, which I think is very useful and uh, something I would highly rec uh, recommend uh, on this car. Uh, now, getting into the Sync 3 system. Uh, I don't like the screen on this car. It's dull. The icons are boring. It's just a whole design. Now, somebody said it was BlackBerry that designed it. I think it's Microsoft that designed this because it looks very Microsoft to me anyway. Uh, one thing, it never crashes. I've never had a single crash from this system. So it's very reliable in that aspect for, for non-crashing. Um, you have all your controls on the bottom here. You have your audio controls, climate, phone, navigation, which will turn to Android Auto. Uh, <laughs> which is ridiculous. You can't run back and forth between the two without going into another menu and turning off Android Auto. Then you have apps and settings. Um, I don't like the general look of this. I think the icons are boring. Uh, I think they should go to a more colorful Apple-like look or like how the new um, uh, Google uh, uh, Android Auto looks, um, which is more Apple-like. This is something I really think they should uh, rethink uh, on this car. Uh, at least for the design. I know they've gone through multiple sync versions. Um, it has something where you can play, have apps where you can run the apps directly on here, but they never seem to work right. Uh, there are very few of them out there that work with this. It's like nobody really cares about it or wants to get involved in it. Uh, telephony works very good on here. You have your phone controls right here on your steering wheel. Um, voice command is also excellent on this car uh, and very advanced. It'll recognize the name of songs that are weird, uh, like Koyani Skatsi. If I say, play Koyani Skatsi, it finds it, no problem. A Honda is not so good at this, but this one, it has very good voice recognition, including for navigation. You can literally tell, tell it right from the get-go to take you somewhere, and it's usually very good about finding that. Uh, I'm trying to think of more about the, uh, the screen. Uh, you also have a home screen on here. And on the left side, you have where the map would show. And that would show the map uh, of your regular GPS. And here again, if you're using Android Auto and you're like running Google Maps or something, or you're you're playing uh, or you're running Waze, it won't show that in a small screen, which I think is terrible. I think it should shrink it down and just make it play in that screen so you can see it in this view if you want to. Another funny thing is it looks like they ran out of room or they decided to put the steering wheel heat heater right here. That's something else I want to mention on this car that's fantastic for me. Heated steering wheel. Doesn't seem like much to most of you, but if you're a diabetic, wonderful heated steering wheel. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, it, it, it if, if you're a diabetic, you'll understand my hands are always freezing cold. Even in the summertime, sometimes I have to do that. Uh, as far as doing updates, this system is capable of updating itself. I can't get, I can get it to connect basically sometimes with my router, but it, it's always throwing up weird errors and responses. It's so unwieldy to deal with. It seems simple, but it doesn't want to hook up half the time. So as far as auto updates, I don't know. I, I think this entire thing needs to be rethought and they've done it multiple times. I, I think they need to, I need to, Think they need to hire different people and just redesign it it's it's not really it's not terrible but it's boring uh the screen has no life to it it's a it's a major miss in this car so uh you know but there's plenty on it and so forth but you know what ha what have you i'm not going to go through the whole things look at my big five part review uh and i went through most of the screens i don't need to go over it uh just suffice it to say 
Uh, it has good voice recognition, just a little boring on the screen. Uh, GPS is excellent on this car. Uh, and I'm trying to think of uh, what other things. Uh, uh, oh, one other thing I hate about this car. I hate this dial that they use for park, reverse, neutral, and drive. Everybody has to have something cool. Make it a small lever or something you pull up and down, something cool. But this stupid circular plastic piece of garbage, hey, don't get me wrong, it works. But it is so stupid. It is just dumb. It looks dumb. It feels like a toy. It acts like a toy. I don't, I don't, it, it, they need to get rid of it. They really need to get rid of it. Uh, you also know that in this car, since it is the um, Ford Fusion uh, Energy, has no cargo space in the trunk, almost none. Uh, obviously, they wanted to get into that $7,500 uh, deal that you get from the government for plugins. And they said, hey, we got the Ford Fusion. It's very popular. And I can understand why it's popular. It drives very nice. It's very comfortable. But uh, obviously, they would have to do a major redesign to fit all the batteries. So they basically put them all in the trunk, took up the entire trunk, which probably hurt the sales of this car massively. Which is a shame because as long as you don't have to go on long trips with lots of people in the car, which means you'd have to have a lot of luggage room, you're fine because there's a lot of room in this car, a lot of leg room, good for tall people, uh, reasonably comfortable for uh, fat people. Uh, it, it drives well, uh, it's relatively comfortable, and it's safety systems, especially it's adaptive cruise control, uh, and with its stop and go capabilities, very reliable. And it's emergency stop systems are also very, very reliable. The car also features uh, Wonder Twin Powers activate form of uh, this uh, the um, oh god rear view mirror, which is also um, set to uh, handle um, which is also uh, self dimming, which is very important. Most people don't even notice that uh, until they get into one, and then they never can live without a self dimming mirror. It is so wonderful. Brakes are excellent on this car. Uh, what I find with the brakes um, is it's you know it's mostly uh, going to be using regenerative braking when you're doing your brakes. Uh, let me engage my speed here. I'm going onto the highway now, getting ready to go to all electric mode. Now, with the brakes, it's mostly regenerative braking. This is unlike my Honda. You can feel the changeover from um, from your regenerative braking into. Um, the actual uh, calipers engaging. It's not, it's subtle, but it is there. It's not a big deal, but the brakes are definitely good. Uh, they they feel comfortable and uh, I, I, I find them very reliable uh, and, and good. One other nice thing that this car comes from, it does come with an app so you can remote start it, unlock it and lock it, and you can also find your car anywhere. It also will compare your braking and, and other things that you do, how many miles you've gotten, miles per gallon all that you got on it with other people in the general area and so forth it's kind of cool and the app is free doesn't cost you anything unlike Honda link which costs you money which is not cool okay guys it's several days later since I've made this video and here I'm gonna do the hits and misses of this car I tried to do an Encoda <laughs> while driving and it was a disaster so uh, at the end of this there's going to be some probably some outtakes I'm going to shove in there of me acting and screaming and acting like a freaking idiot because um, <laughs> I kept messing up the end of the video so I wanted to talk about what I liked and what I didn't like about this car and just give me your final impressions so first we're going to start with the likes first thing it's quiet this car is in it's very quiet. Now, you do get some engine drone at times, but overall, this is a quiet car. Even Consumer Reports that we're talking about cars that were considered very quiet. You know, if you have a child in the back and it's asleep, you're driving around, you don't want to worry about it waking up while you're driving around. This is the car. It's very quiet and it has a lot of comfort overall. Number two, good sound system. Uh, you guys know, I. any of you who watched my Insight videos know that I'm into very heavy-duty sound. And this car does not have a great sound system. But for the average person, the sound is very good. And it's passable even for me. It'll play just about anything you put into it competently. You have to put your treble and your mid-range mid at maximum because it is a very muddy-sounding sound system. 
But the sound overall is pretty darn good. It's enjoyable, and I think the average person is really going to like the sound in this car. It also comes with a CD player, which is good for the good old folks like me who need CD players and you know, can't handle it. Uh, all right, now we get to number three, and this is more personal to me, heated steering wheel. This is something I wish I had on my insight. When you're a diabetic, your hands are freezing cold, the heated steering wheel, it, until you own a car with a heated steering wheel, You'll never know what you're really missing. So most of you without heated steering before, you don't know what you're missing. It's wonderful to have a warm car steering wheel to hold on to. And yes, it makes a difference that way. You don't have to aim the vents at your hands and hope it doesn't blow on your face. So heated steering. <clears throat> Number three, excellent GPS. This GPS is very accurate. I like the way it dings when it's time to make a turn. Uh, it gives very good... Um, Directions. It uh, has an excellent uh, uh, list of um, uh, excellent list of, uh, of points of interest. Thank goodness, I figured I'd get it out. And uh, it, it's <clears throat> it's just it, it works very well. I mean, it's one of the few ones that made it so I really never had to use um, the uh, Google Maps or anything like that. It's an excellent GPS system. <clears throat> now we get to what is it one? Number f number five, it looks like. Very good voice control. Uh, for most people, this doesn't really matter, but it's nice to be able to press the button and do exactly what you do in Google Maps and say, take me to McDonald's, take me to Arby's, uh, take me to Best Buy. And this thing knows how to do it without any problems very quickly and very easily. It also is good at understanding weird uh, names of, of songs and so forth. So if you wanted to skip to a song on your thumb drive or whatever, you can say it, and it invariably, it's almost right, or it'll give you a list of things, and one of the things will be right. So now, number six. Excellent. Uh, well, it's got an eco cruise control, but excellent stop-and-go cruise control and radar. This car is very reliable. It's seen cars in front of it. Uh, pedestrians, uh, probably some animals, I'm more than likely. Uh, it's very reliable for slowing you down at the right time. Um, it'll always set, set off a big alarm if things are getting bad uh, or if it thinks there's a, a danger of something happening, uh, including a bright alarm. It'll turn down the volume of the stereo while doing this. But generally, the cruise control is basically about as infallible as a cruise control, a radar-controlled cruise control can be. Barring normal things like you have to go around a corner and the car's right there, it's not going to see the car in time to hit your, hit your brakes. But if I'm driving 30, 40 miles per hour and there's a car stopped at a stoplight, it'll almost always see that car and stop my car without any problems. So, And the cruise control uh, is fantastic because it maintains your speed very well. It'll even slow you down so when you're going down a big hill, it'll automatically engage uh, the, uh, the braking charge up the battery, and keep you at the proper speed. So I consider that uh, an excellent uh, plus. Number seven, good blind spot detection. Uh, this car has excellent blind spot detection. I, I like blind spot detection. I prefer it. It's the first car I've ever had that actually had it. Uh, it's very accurate, and it's very necessary in this car because you got big pillars in it, and it's very easy to lose track of cars in this vehicle. Excellent... Um, Blind spot detection and the mirrors are fantastic too because they're heated, uh, they're tinted, that therefore you don't get blinded by uh, people with their brights. Uh, so I have to add that great mirrors as well. And number eight, very roomy cabin. Uh, when you get in this car, you have a lot of room to stretch. If you're a tall, this car should be very comfortable for you. The chair is, you know, can be changed in various positions without any problems, but there's plenty of leg room, plenty of places to chill out, uh, and, and plenty of room in the back for anybody who wants to sit back there. This car has a lot of room. So that is the end of the basic likes that I like of this car. Oh, and the looks. I'll make number I'll, I'll make a number 9. Number 9. I like the looks of this car, except for except for the tail end besides the spoiler which actually looks good. The car looks like an Aston Martin. It, it's got the Aston Martin look and I always thought that was fantastic. So number 9 looks. The car looks snazzy and always has looked snazzy. So, uh, you know, you're not going to get any head turning. There are a lot of them on the road, but it is a fantastic uh, looking car in my opinion.
Now we're going to move on to the misses. Number one, this car is a horror in snow without snow tires. Now everyone's going to say, well, duh, all cars are a horror in snow without snow tires. Well, not really. Uh, I mean, this car also will get you around, but this car is actually kind of scary. If you don't have snow tires in this car, <clears throat> you drive around in the snow, this car is scary. And it, ha it has to do with the energy saver tires and the soft suspension to give you that nice, smooth, comfortable ride. You need to get yourself snow tires for this car. Number two, uh, as a matter of personal opinion, but the front console, uh, where all the buttons are for the for the um, uh, for the AC and and for the heated seats and so forth, uh, too many buttons and it, it it looks stupid. It really looks stupid. This really needs to be redesigned. I think they've redesigned it several times. I think they used to have um, like uh, electronic buttons, which suck. They need to go to the idea of what a lot of cars are doing now, where you can literally take a dial. And you could turn it to different things and press it in, and dials will take care of the problem. So mediocre front console, pretty pretty ugly. Number three, the Sync 3 system sucks. Uh, I mean, of course, that's a matter also of opinion, but basically that's what a review is. It's an opinion. I, it's unaspiring. The graphics are ugly. Uh, it, it's just... It just, I mean, it's reasonably fast. I mean, it's not, it's not very fast, but it runs reasonably fast and has plenty of settings. But things don't really, you can't do updates easily on it. I don't care what people say. It's not that easy to get the updates to work wirelessly. Uh, you can't do, your, if you want to try doing your climate control on it, it's, it's a pain in the butt. Uh, the buttons are ugly. Uh, there's just, the colors are no good. It's just very, it's a very uninspiring Look, so the Sync 3 system, again, I think just a good graphical update and a little bit more common sense on how to set up your buttons, although some of them are good, and I think that'll do better. Number four, and this goes with the Sync 3 system, but basically this has to do with the equipment. The screen in this car stinks. Uh, now, one thing people might like is that it's, it's non-glossy, which is good for reflection, but it also makes it incredibly dark dull to look at. It's dim looking. I mean, it gives up enough brightness, but it looks dim. It looks cheap. Uh, it just doesn't look like it's quality. Uh, the easiest way to see the difference is look at the one in the Honda, look at this one. The one in the Honda just looks better. It looks better. Also, it would be, it would be helpful if we had more buttons to control inside the system, uh, physical buttons as opposed to electronic buttons. Number five. And this is also a matter of opinion. The car is a bore to drive. It's very comfortable to drive, which was my number one for the likes. Very comfortable, good cruiser. But if you're looking to hit the car curves fast and all that and enjoy yourself with this car in that aspect, that's not how you're going to enjoy this car. This car is going to be enjoyable because it's comfortable to sit in. It's got all the accoutrements. It's got all the tech. It's got pretty good music sound. That's why you're going to like it. If you're looking to have fun in this car, look elsewhere. This is not a fun car. This is a cruiser, and, and don't think any uh, anything different. Number six, and this is a personal dislike to me, the toy the toy like shifter, that stupid dial shifter. My God, Ford, get rid of that freaking thing, please. Get rid of it. It sucks. It feels as cheap as it seems. It's crappy garbage. Get rid of it. Number seven, the lane departure system don't work right. Uh, it, it probably works. It works right based on what they're supposed to be. It, and of course, it's Bosch. But who cares? The lane departure makes no sense. Uh, you know, make your car learn how to actually... Uh, the lane de I, I went in in the entire video. The lane departure system does not work right. Uh, you, you know, if you're getting near the thing, it should pull you and try to pull you toward the center, which it supposedly does, but you can barely feel it. And then as soon as you get to the line, it should shake the steering wheel. Instead, it tries to push you over and you go over the line and you touch the line, it does nothing. If you go over the line slowly, it just turns gray and you just lets you drive off into the other lane and you're dead. Ridiculous. It makes no sense. Terrible, terrible, terrible lane departure. Uh, number eight, personal for me, no front parking sensors. Guys, I know we need to check on our way back and make sure we don't hit anything when we back up. But sometimes we need help in the front too, especially doofuses like me. 
I got to pull into a tight garage. It would help a lot, a lot if I had front parking sensors on this car. Never, never put a car with the only rear parking sensors. Put, put, don't be cheap. Put three sensors in the front so there's some front parking sensors. Don't be, don't be dumb. Uh, number nine. <laughs> well, trunk space. There ain't any. Uh, yeah. People who are going on trips need not apply unless you want to take, unless it's just you, your loved one, a dog, and you can put most of your luggage in the back seat with the dog because it ain't it ain't happening. No no trunk space. Um, and number ten, and this is just pisses me off. No no free updates for the damn GPS. At least give me a one or two of them. Oh my God, the car's thirty five thousand dollars. You you guys can't afford to throw in a GPS update or two. That is so cheap and stupid. And that is pretty much what the main dislikes I have. Uh, one thing, I wish it had lane centering, but it doesn't. But what are you going to do about that? Now I'm going to show you, <laughs> well, that's the end of this review. This is, uh, after 10,000 miles, what I think of the car. The car has been reliable. I like driving it. Uh, the sound system is just good enough. Once you add the sub and disconnect those stupid microphones, it's just good enough to be passable for me so I don't have to fool around with it. Besides a leased car, who the hell wants to fool around with a leased car in that aspect? Um, it's got plenty of room for people. It, it's, it's a good car. It really is. It's a very good car. And it could be so much better, but Ford is dumping it anyway. They're dumping most of the cars, which I think is absolutely asinine. But it is what it is. So this is going to be the end of this video, except I think I'm going to shove a couple of bloopers at the end. I haven't decided. Because this video is going to be long. Long video. People don't like long videos. But I'm going to shove some bloopers. Uh, eh, yeah, I'm going to put some bloopers at the end. And uh, try to at least make you guys laugh a little bit of how stupid I am when I'm trying to, to, to make a coda to the end of this video while I was driving. Well, that's it. Over and out. Um, the actual uh, calipers engaging. It's not, it's subtle. But it is there. It's not a big deal, but the brakes are definitely good. Uh, they they feel comfortable, and uh, I, I I find them very reliable uh, and and good. <laughs> I'm freaking babbling, guys. I can't help it. I can't help but babble when I talk about this car, uh, when I talk about things, because none of this is done. I, I don't even... Oh, fuck it. I'll just end up editing this shit out anyway, right? So now that I'm driving here, I'm going to have to keep thinking... So, in conclusion, excellent car, great safety systems, uh, decent stereo, good for an average person is going to be pretty happy with the stereo in this system. Uh, lane departure is kind of mediocre on this car and not really well set. Uh, for most people, I recommend you don't have it, uh, you, you set it mostly for vibrate rather than anything else because there's no reason to, to you know, to worry about it otherwise. Um, what is this? Oh, that's for Linky. All right, we'll start over for the end code. All right, so what are my final feelings about this car? It's comfortable to ride in. It's a cruiser. Uh, let me... Oh, fuck. All right, start over. Third time's the charm. All right, I'm now all electric mode on the highway. All right, what do I feel... So what is my final opinion of this car? Am I happy with it? Yes. This is a very comfortable car to ride in overall. Uh, it's got a very smooth, quiet ride on the road, uh, so you can hear your music. Um, it's uh, cruise control. It's reliable. It's adaptive cruise control is reliable, including stop and go traffic. It sees over. The interior is very pretty. Uh, it's got good accoutrements. It's got a lot of soft touch all across. Uh, seats are not as comfortable as you would think they would be, but they're comfortable enough, and they're all power. Uh, it's got the... Uh, uh, it, it's got... Oh, God, this truck is driving me nuts. Yeah, yeah, go, go. Get out of my way. This son of a bitch. I gotta start this whole fucking thing over because this asshole in front of me. Okay, so what are my final feelings about this car? I think it's an excellent cruiser. It's very comfortable, smooth on the road. It's quiet. 
handles reasonably well, gets very good gas mileage, especially if you learn your routes. Um, so therein lies a big, uh, a big negative. Um, but overall, it's a great car. Adding in on this, uh, adding in on this, and it, it doesn't matter because I have to edit this out because my nose is itchy. Adding in on all of this. I don't even need to add it in, just say it. So you got all of that. So final thoughts, I like this car. I think it's comfortable. I think it, it seems to be reliable, although it's only got 10,000 miles, so it has no reason to be unreliable at this point. It's got a decent sound system in it. It's got good safety systems, except for its lane departure, which you can fix by literally just setting it to worn only, in which case it'll always shake when you cross, it'll shake your steering wheel when you cross the line. And that should be enough for the vast majority of people. It's got excellent GPS built into it. Um, I find the computer system to be a little boring, but it is reliable. It doesn't die or anything like that. Uh, heating and cooling is comfortable. Pretty much it's a 